Well, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Wednesday, the 1st of June, and I hope you're well. Um, do feel free to comment. Let me know you're here. Let me just straighten the camera up. I'm kind of wonky. There we go. Um, it's lovely that you can join me. As always, we use a form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We'll use one of the day's Bible readings and a reflection on the reading. On a Wednesday, the theme for our prayers is the Holy Spirit. And so we pause and we pray. The Spirit of the Lord fills the whole world. The Spirit of the Lord moves over the deep. The Spirit of the Lord warms our hearts. The Spirit of the Lord fills all things. Come Holy Spirit. Come Lord of life. Come wind of heaven. Come flame of love. Come giver of all gifts. Come and fill us. And today's psalm is Psalm 139. The Spirit of God is in all the world. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there's not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you, the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvellously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. The Spirit of God is in all the world. This morning our Bible reading comes from the book of 1 Kings in the Old Testament. 1 Kings chapter 19. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bu bush sat down under it and prayed that he may die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread, baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he travelled for forty days and forty nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. And then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you are there, anoint Hazael, king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Mehola, to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazael, and Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. 
Yet I reserve seven thousand in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. So that amazing story um, of Elisha and, uh, and God. And I'm going to read a, a reflection on that passage this week. The reflections are written by the Reverend Justine Alan Chapman. She says, legacy fever can drive a leader near the end of their time of office to focus on what history will say of them. It can take over and cloud their judgment. Accustomed to success and praise, they want what will they have achieved handed on with their name attached. Elijah, having won the contest with the prophets of Baal, has to flee for his life after his fellow prophets are all slaughtered. This isn't what he's expected and in a state of nervous agitation, he prays for death because he has ended up no better than his ancestors. Restored by sleep and food, he travels and retreats to a cave on Mount Horeb to pray again. At times of danger and of fear, we can get restless, preoccupied and unable to focus on what matters now. The Lord asks Elijah twice what he is doing in the cave, and both times Elijah starts by justifying himself, indignant at the way things have turned out. Elijah takes a while to settle and hear the voice of God. The noise of his success, his fear, the wind, earthquake and fire need to pass. There needs to be silence before he emerges from the cave, realising he has come to hear what the Lord will say. Elijah's legacy to us is that in the fever of life, should we retreat to pray and wait, we will hear the still small voice of calm. I think that's really brilliant, isn't it? How we have to get through all the self-justifying and fear and concern and the earthquake and the noise and the wind and then settle and hear and wait and hear the still small voice of calm. And so we pray, beginning with the, the collect for this week. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we continue in prayer. On all who are dispirited and dejected, on all who've lost hope or joy, on all who are unable to cope, on all who are weak and heavy burdened, on all who are fearful and anxious, on all who are lost or have strayed, on all who are powerless and helpless, Lord, have mercy. Holy Spirit, bringing order out of chaos. Holy Spirit, breathing life into the lifeless. Holy Spirit, making strong the weak. Holy Spirit, guiding all who venture. Holy Spirit, filling all things, come renew the face of the earth. And we pray for Ukraine. Holy God, we hold before you all who live close to war and conflict and all who live close to the threat of war and violence. We remember especially at this time people in Ukraine and Russia. We pray for non-violence and peaceful resolutions of conflict. Give us hearts of hospitality and sanctuary. Forgive us all our hostility and hatred. Bring all people to the humanity you give us and to the reconciliation and healing for which you gave your life. Strengthen us all to work with you to build justice and peace, reconciliation and healing in our hearts and homes, in our streets, in all communities, neighbourhoods and nations. Bless all who live lives for the peace and well-being of others and make their service fruitful. In the name of Christ. Amen. And we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The strength of God, guide us. The power of God, preserve us. The wisdom of God, instruct us. The Spirit of God, be within us today and evermore. So may God the Father bless us. May Christ the Son take care of us. May the Holy Spirit enlighten us all the days of our lives. Amen. So thank you for joining me for prayer. Um, there is a service in the church today at 11 o'clock if you're able to come along. Um, and we'll be back here for prayer tomorrow at 9.45. Until then, take care. God bless. Bye for now.